you're looking at. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's so many guys in between the band and the money, yeah. so many middlemen. Yeah. Like, I mean, in Europe it's ridiculous, man. It's like eight, nine guys in between you and the cash, all copying your whack. So sooner or later you think, well, this is a bit stupid, man. Take one, take seven. Roll sound. George, how's the trip? Oh, that was really pretty nice. happy. Yeah. Um, Steve, uh, how have things been in England over the last couple of years? Uh, how do you mean, how have things been? What do you well, mean? since you, you're in Australia in 67, um, yeah. how's the group progressed since then? Progressed? Yeah. Well, being in England, we've taken in a lot of influences. <laughs> Alcohol. <laughs> uh, no, we've, we've sort of... I guess we must have sort of naturally progressed. I don't know, we don't want to say we've progressed unnaturally. How are the Australian groups that are going overseas, like the Lardy Dars and the Groove Fairing? Oh, well, they're, unfortunately, they're in, in a bad position of um, going over there blind, you know, just without any sort of preparation, you know. That's the only, they're very good, there's nothing, the Lardy Dars are a very good group, but they're, it's a very sort of big scene, you know, it's, Unfortunately, it's not how good you are anyway, I don't think. Have they been mismanaged virtually? Well, they didn't, they're, not, they're not being managed at all, you see. They went over there on their, their own sort of thing. George, is this what you're doing with your company? Is it managing Australian groups and that are going over there? No, it's, uh, it's managing anybody with talent. And we see so many people around England, good songwriters, groups, singers, that have a lot of talent but never get the chance to get somewhere. We just we just like to give them this chance. I got talent. Yeah, no. Can you sign me up? <laughs> we sign. What's the difference playing between to an Australian audience, um, a continental audience and an English audience? Well, it's, just, uh, like, well, it's a different sort of temperament. <laughs> Actually, the German audience and the Australian audience is an enthusiasm. Uh, much uh, alike. Uh, very much alike. Yeah. Uh, different in the English audiences are very blasé. American audiences are split up because of the different states and they all have different receptive. bags and different likes and interests in music. And uh, the commies like anything red. <laughs> yeah. There's a, a big scene on the American campuses for pop groups performing. Uh, not, is pop there groups, anything... not pop groups, sorry. That's not true. Oh, well, well groups performing. Uh, mainly, mainly underground groups in the American campuses. Yeah. Is there anything like that in the English university set up? Yeah, in oh, the yeah. colleges. The There's a big so college yeah. circuit. Actually, we've been doing a lot of college work ourselves. You've just had Peculiar Hole in the Sky released in Australia. You recorded this about 18 months ago. Um, does this worry that they've released such an old record? Well, it's not a bad, not a bad little song. I just heard it today and it sounds all right, so I'm not ashamed of it. Uh, sort of representative of your sound today, Harry? No. How old is it? Of our sound today? Yeah. No. No, it's not typical of our sound there, no. but I, th I think <coughs> if, it, if, if it would have been released hey, 18 months ago, it still would have been coffee. hit. And you're treating this as mainly a holiday, is it, to see family and things uh, like that? Not a holiday, uh, oh, it's, a work, it's sort of a working <laughs> holiday. A yeah. a it's to see everybody we know. <laughs> what do you want? Cream and tissue. 